Yeah, and I, I think that's a good lesson for filmmakers trying to get their first film made. Yes, the first nine A-list talent people will turn you down. They'll say no, they'll say they're unavailable. That's why you make a long list. Yeah, that's why you make a long list for that one that one character. Never pin your hopes on one person because they'll be unavailable, yeah. they'll say no, whatever it is. But yeah, but, but reach out to the people you really want in that role. And if the script is there, if the story's there, then you'll be surprised who will say yes. Welcome to Cinema 5D On The Go. Moving conversations about moving images with filmmakers and industry leaders. Brought to you by Tilta, Blackmagic Design, Manfrotto, and Olympus OMD, in association with Sony. This is your host, Nino Leitner. So, you mentioned the feature. How do you, I mean, shooting a feature is a massive undertaking. Yeah. Um, how do you find the money for that? Uh, it's, it's, you know, like in Europe, we're the, the indie feature community and really, you know, Everything that's not kind of co-funded by the big TV stations there uh, is indie, <laughs> in a yeah. way. Yeah. Um, is always dependent on public funding uh, because one of the problems being there is it's very very hard to make a movie a, a commercial success in Europe with all the different languages, all the scattered markets, and the but the public funding means that you generally have to shoot in the language of the country, which means it's very hard to, you know, it, if you shoot something in English, it has a huge market. You can market it everywhere. Uh, you can dub it for different markets. You can do that with other movies, apparently, of course, too, with other languages, but it doesn't happen that often. But anyway, so the, it's very limited in what you, you know, the reach you can have, and that also limits the audience. That in turn means you earn less money and la 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 basically yeah and people wow. become really dependent on that funding system on the other hand i know here no funding exists really for features so <laughs> how do you how do you get money for them and how can you make it economically viable making films in the united states is very hard first i should say you know that that in the united states we think that in europe you just get all the money by like writing a grant <laughs> proposal so that's the reputation so it's 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 tough to hear that it's a little harder than that well there's a lot of competition in that as well right and it takes a lot longer so you know you work for if you have a feature under your belt already it's easier right mm -hmm. uh, but if you start your first feature it takes years yeah, um, to get the money. So I'm involved with one of those where I was supposed to be the DP, and then there's a lot of politics involved as well. Yeah, um, it's it's not easy. Yeah. Well, so can can I just attach our names to your feature, and then it would be like easier? Can I like gaff or PA for you or something? Um, I don't know. It's more like you know the <laughs> no. director needs oh, to. Okay. Uh, right. Yeah. It depends where some of the funding comes from. So it's a, in in this particular case. Um, I can't share too much about it, but sure, okay. you know, like generally, it's the the co-production between two European countries, mm. and then both funding bodies have uh, things to say about who is in creative positions, and they generally want to put people from their country in those positions. So, of course, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Um, right. Well, yeah, so in the United States, you fund independent films, and independent films are usually under a million dollars or under five million dollars. Um, that would be a huge budget in Europe for most, really? yeah. For, you know, in indie films, that's, that's a good budget. I mean, for us, we're like cutting C-stands because they cost too much daily to rent yeah. <laughs> on that money. Anyway, well, uh, yeah, yeah, so we do, we do foreign pre-sales. Um, we uh, and well, let me let me dive into foreign pre-sales a little bit. So, you you come up with a package for your movie, right? You attach as much talent as you can. You have a great script. You have a great director attached. You have some talent attached in in some of the primary roles, and you try to get as many foreign pre-sales off of that uh, as you can. So you secure a, a an agent that's great yeah. in foreign pre-sales. You go to them and you say, Hey guys. Uh, we have a movie starring Danny Glover, for example. Uh, 
with, you know, Tilda Swinton and uh, Meryl Streep, which would be a great cast. <laughs> I, would, I, would love, I would love to that, make that be movie. a very interesting cast, yeah. yeah. And so these foreign pre-sale agents, they know, for example, that Tilda Swinton is a ama- Everyone in Hungary loves Tilda Swinton. Meryl Streep, really big in like northern England. This is England. all hypothetical. This is all hypothetical, everyone. <laughs> I, Meryl Streep is popular everywhere. <laughs> um, and and they'll say fine. Except in the White House. <laughs> Except in the White Listen, House. Listen, wherever people are breathing, they love Meryl Streep, whether they can admit it or not. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'm oversimplifying this a little bit, but Hungary will pay you, uh, say, $100,000 to make the math easy. Yeah. Uh, and it will say, okay, look, for the rights to um, your film, it's a hundred grand. It will play all of our Hungary. Yippee. They're not going to give you that money up front, okay? Maybe they'll give you $25,000 up yeah. front, $50,000 halfway through the movie, and the, full, the next 50, you get it when the movie's complete, okay? Now you have a piece of paper. It says Hungary's going to give me this amount of money. Now you can borrow from banks with different entertainment divisions against what Hungary is going to give you. Okay. And you do that the same way. You go in there, you say, Meryl Streep's doing it, Tilda Swinton's doing it, we've done two other movies in this case, Um, we're going to deliver. Yeah. And Hungary's going to give us a guaranteed amount of money. The bank's like, okay, we'll give you such and such interest rate, we'll give you gap financing towards your entire budget, which for easy math might be a million dollars. Uh, and then you start to build your package that way and you kind of piece it together uh, that way. And so say your post budget is uh, $200,000. You say, look, post house, I can't give you $200,000. I can give you creative equity points. I mean, this gets a little complicated, so bear with me here. <laughs> so movies are split 50-50 yeah. between investor equity points and creative points. Okay. If I'm a camera guy, I agree to cut my rate. I would like creative points in exchange for that. If I'm an investor, I would like equity points. What are those points? It's like air miles or It's exactly like air miles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, if if a movie is 100 uh 100 points, 50 points are going to investors. Uh, they are getting equity points. A pretty common model in the United States for investors is if you put in a thousand dollars, you're gonna get a thousand dollars back uh-huh. and 20% on top of that as your profit. And then every dollar after 20% is split 50 50 between the equity pie and the creative pie. Yeah. So I mean, you can tell already, right, Fabian, that it's better to be on the investor side, <laughs> right? Because they're getting paid first, but also they're taking the most risk, yeah. right? Yeah. They're the ones that are going to u- lose their yacht if the movie doesn't make money. Yeah. Oh, okay. So money, money. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. <laughs> money is always worth more than you know your work, basically. Yeah. yeah. Than being able to light of a couch. So, yeah. so yeah. So in a nutshell. That's sort of how the points break down. And when the post house says, Graham, we want $200,000, I say I'm not going to give you $200,000, but I'll give you five creative points. And that means they're excited, they're part of the movie, they feel like they're partners, and I give them $100,000 cash instead of $200,000. And I start building a independent film that way. Does that make sense? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, much. does it, right? And then, yeah, yeah and, and movie stars, I can never pay a movie star what they'd make for a studio film, but, yeah. but movie stars want to do projects that they care about and that have great scripts. Right. So, Because that, in turn, will help them get, a, uh, get bigger studio movies, which well, are different from what they usually do, probably, right? Because, yeah. I well, guess. Well, it depends, because some people, like John Hamm does a ton of indie films, and he doesn't he doesn't need to do to do them yeah. but a lot yeah. of a lot of actors want to do really interesting characters that they won't necessarily have the opportunity to do in like a more commercial or more studio scenario right so something that's a little more interesting that has a little more grit that's a little riskier yeah um, and I, I think that's a good lesson for filmmakers trying to get their first film made yes the first nine A-list talent people will turn you down. They'll say no, they'll say they're unavailable. That's why you make a long list. Yeah, that's why you make a long list for that one that one character. Never pin your hopes on one person because they'll be unavailable, yeah. they'll say no, whatever it is. 
Um, but yeah, but but reach out to the people you really want in that role. And if the script is there, if the story's there, then you'll be surprised who will say yes. Interesting. But the other thing is that you have to be realistic, right? You're not going to start out making a $1 million right. independent film. So you have to write a script or have find a writer who can write a script within realistic means, right? Yeah. So, you know, the first film we were a part of all really shot in in, in one house, uh, a, a general store and a forest. <laughs> and then we just repurposed the shit out of all of those locations. Um, and if you can make that happen, if you have access to one location, obviously you can keep the cost, cost yeah. down. If you own your own gear, you can really keep the cost down, you know? Yeah, and, and that first film, that's a genre film, uh, it's called Dry Blood, it's a horror film, yeah. and genre films are easier in general to sell uh, and get distribution for because that that translates better internationally versus comedy, right? Okay, yeah. So, Which is also why we would argue that you need to diversify your skill set. That film was made with eight people. Graham and I were the entire crew. Yeah. You know? Oh, wow. Um, okay. The director was also the gaffer. Right. Uh, the director's in the film. I, oh, yeah. I don't want to give anything away, but I, I might be in it near the end. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, that movie got, that movie got distribution. And... <laughs> When I shouldn't say yeah. we were the entire crew, I should say we were the entire camera department, but because everybody pitched in. Um, That's the, amazing. The director's wife, her name was Susan, and we gave her a different S name for every role that she was. Like she was Sylvia when she was doing makeup, and she, you <laughs> so know, just she, so the credits look better, or no, 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 was, was no, 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 that was, <laughs> <laughs> no, it was that inside joke on the set. <laughs> no, the credits still are like. Rin, 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 Graham, yeah. Graham, Graham. No, it's like don't. every every student film, right? Yeah. Like my short yeah. films were like that. Yeah. So yeah. how did you guys actually get started? I mean, where did you meet and how you know did you go to film school or? Oh, uh, you tell that story. How did we meet? Yeah. So um, Graham and I studied theater and film, and uh, we were good buddies in school and dated other people and got closer and closer and then worked. became lovers yes well there you go <laughs> that's that's pretty much the, no no that's i mean we, abridged, yeah. yeah we had classes together uh and you know like things do we just we connected and we liked the same kind of movies and we liked this we had the same sort of sensibilities we uh, shot a short uh together really early on uh that was based on a short story that graham's dad wrote way back in the day and um from there, we just kind of kept making stuff together. So we've really never uh, been together when we weren't also working together. So it's just part of our makeup as a couple to also be a team. Cool. So you guys were really born in the industry, kind of? I mean, your dad is a writer, right? Or yeah. a producer? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I was born into the industry. That f sounds a little strange, I hope. Yeah, <laughs> anyway, but yeah, I, I was around. Uh, I, I had a creative family. They encouraged me yeah. that, you know, doing this is an actual profession that you can make money <laughs> they, doing. They didn't uh, force me to, to go to law school or try any of those things. You know, get a, get a real job, yeah. quote unquote. Um, yeah, no, no, my, my father wrote uh, Star Trek Next Generation and Charlie's Angels and Walking Tall and some of these, like, super cool, iconic sort of 80s That's shows. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So I grew up in that environment, so, you know. he. I think he showed me Lawrence of Arabia when I was, like, eight. <laughs> you know, I, I missed, like, 15 years of popular television because he was only showing me, like, <laughs> massive cinematic yeah. films like, you know, Bridge Over the River Kwai and The Guns of Navarone and stuff when I'm, like, nine and ten, you know. And I did not grow up in the industry at all. Uh, I grew up on a farm outside of Louisville, Kentucky. My dad's an engineer and my mom was a bookkeeper. So, um, it... Cool. How did they react when you told them, I'm going to be in the movies? <laughs> well, <laughs> I actually, um, I acted as a kid professionally from the age of nine. Oh, cool. So, um, I think they kind of always knew, but... I even, like in college, I even studied 
paralinguistics and I was in business school for a little bit. I was always kind of trying uh, to not, not that they put that pressure on me, but they were like, don't you want to use your brain, kid? You know? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> like, uh. <laughs> um, but Parents, they, we all, love them. But. They've always been really supportive, even though it's really far away from their world. Yeah. So. Well, awesome, guys. What's next for you? Like, in terms of personal projects that you want to do? What's the next step? Well, right now we're in pre-production for uh, two... Another films couple feature that, films. And I don't, yeah. that we can't really yeah. chat about too much. But they're super awesome. <laughs> uh, and they're both, com love they're both comedies, which uh, we're pretty stoked about because uh, we're we're ready to go in that direction. That's what we want to be doing. Cool. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I, I don't like typecasting, and I think it's probably impossible to typecast us. And I'm okay with that. I, if, if, if we're going to be typecast as, you know, producers or shooters or filmmakers that do something, I just want to be known as someone who does like quality, interesting things that people want to watch. You know, that's that's it for me, and that uh, yeah. that tickle my uh, my brain. Awesome. So that's a nice closing statement, I would say. And we're all very very hungry. We want to get something to eat here in our last night in Vegas. Yay. Yeah. So bye Vegas. Bye Vegas. <laughs> bye Vegas. Bye audience. And thanks for watching this episode of Cinema 5D on the go. Um, we'll be stuck here in the traffic jam for a while before we get our food, but um, yeah, thanks for watching and stay tuned to Cinema 5D for all things uh, related to cameras, camera reviews, camera news, anything geeky to do with cameras, we are there for you. <laughs> Tune in next week, thanks for watching. <laughs>